to see how we take an outdated piece of furniture and modernize it with a brand new base. Stay tuned for a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to build this beautiful custom base. The first thing we need to do is pick up the materials and we're going to head to that store that advertises low prices, but let's just be real. The prices aren't always that low. Now the first thing we're going to do here is walk straight to the back of the store where normally where the specialty lumber is that they have and here we're going to go into buying looking for the oak boards and that's what we build our custom bases out of. And this is a one by three by eight and I'm actually going to pick up two of these but as you'll see later on I only need one. And for the legs on the base we're going to build, we're going to get a 2x2 two two here, and I'm going to show you how we're going to taper the legs to give it a nice little design on the front. And whenever you are buying lumber, you want to check and make sure that the board is fairly straight. We can have a little bit of play because we're going to be cutting it down, but we want it to be fairly straight. And you can see here I got two of the 8-foot boards and one 3-foot board for the legs. And here's the piece we're going to be working on today and building a base. This base is not my original idea. We actually are getting it from a fellow YouTuber, DIY Wife, and she had a great tutorial on it. And I've made a few adjustments that I like a little bit better than what she put out in her original video, but I'll put a link in the description for her video and you can go and compare the two. And the first thing we need to do here is get this thing on its top and get it flipped upside down so we can get to work and get this old base off of there. So removing the screws here was easy enough, but as you're going to see here in just a second, this, this base here was actually glued on as well, so I had to take a rubber mallet and kind of beat it off. And as you'll see later as well, some of the wood actually broke off and I had to take a putty knife and kind of chisel it out. But we'll see that later in the video as we clean up the base ready for the new wood to be added on. So here we are getting measurements for the piece and to, to build the base and I always like to write them on the bottom of the piece there so they're nice and handy to see. You can see here the 2x2 two two we bought for the legs is actually one and a half inches thick and we want to take that into consideration when we're adding our measurements for the base across the front and the back as well. So what I do here is actually just subtract three from our total. In addition to that, we want to overhang here of about a half an inch on each side, so we'll take that into consideration as well. And here we are doing the final math on everything and coming up with 53 and a half inches is what we want to cut our main board across the front. And here we are just doing the exact same thing on the sides. And here we are just measuring out 53 and a half inches to cut the first board for the front of the base. When you make these cuts, you want to make sure that your blade is right snug up to the outside of the line. And that's what I am doing right here before I cut, is making sure I got it just where I want it. And here I'm cutting the side pieces and the main thing that you want to do here is if we're off a few millimeters it's not that big of a deal but we want both of them to be exactly the same length. So I'm actually going to shave just a little bit off the top one and cut the bottom one so I know they're perfectly the same. And here's where we get into measuring the legs and we all of our legs are typically 5 inches in height. We're going to cut a taper on these legs and we don't want the taper to come up above where the where it's going to connect with the base. So here I am just marking and it's actually going to be two and a half inches from the top to start our taper. And we're going to set our miter saw at 15 degrees for the taper. This is a not so fancy little jig that I made. Um, it just makes us be able to get those tapers exactly the same on each side. So I've got my jig roughly set up here so the so I can get the leg up and I want to make sure that my blade comes in just on the inside of that lower mark that I made for where the base connects to the leg. We don't want our taper to go up into the base of the base. And here I've got everything locked into place and I'm just clamping it all in to where nothing will move and I'm going to make one cut on one end and then I'm going to flip it over and make another cut on another end. So that gives me two tapered legs and then I'll make four cuts on it all at five inches each to get all, of, all four of my legs made.
And this is just another shot of the setup as I take it down here and we're going to move the miter saw back to zero degrees and I'm going to make those four cuts uh, all identical. Here I am with the board one on top of the other. I'm going to move it right before I make my cut so that way it doesn't go flying off and I know that I've got an identical match to what I've already cut. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Now that we have all of our pieces cut, we are moving on to pocket hole time. And a lot of people don't like pocket holes, but they work fine for this application. And we are actually using the Craig pocket hole jig here, and we're putting two into each side that's going to go into the legs, and then we're putting several up on the other up on the middle portion of it that's actually going to go up into the dresser. All in all here, I think I put somewhere between 25 and 30 pocket holes in this piece, and that's probably pretty standard for most of the pieces that we do. And now we are on to the assembly part, and I like to add the tight bond number two glue in between everywhere that is going to be connecting, and we are trying to strengthen those pocket holes just a little bit more. Another thing you'll see here is I have what looks like two stir sticks, and they're actually glued together, and they give a little bit of a offset on the front and on the sides of the piece where the base goes into the leg and it's a really nice little touch on um, on these pieces so they're not flush up against the front of the leg or flush on the sides this gives it just a little bit of offset and a nice little touch and you always want to make sure that you turn the leg toward the inside the taper is going to be going on the inside not on the outside and we're just going to repeat the steps again here Right here is where it would be really helpful to have an extra set of hands helping you out. This clamp does not do a great job of holding this in place. You've got to make sure that you kind of keep your hand on it or your body leaned up against it or something to try to get this, um, these two pieces connected. And now that we have the base all put together, we need to get the dresser cleaned up on the bottom. And this is what I'm doing here is just some of that wood had broke off and I'm cleaning it up. And then I'm going to go back here and I sand it all nice and smooth so we've got something for good connection all the way around on our base. And you always want to check your work before you dive in. Now at this point, it's probably a little late. We'd have to start over and build the base again. But everything looks pretty good here. And now I'm going to flip the piece back over. And we're going to go back to the tight bond too and put a good amount on it to help with secure the pocket holes on. And I'm actually going to use my handy dandy uh, glue spreader here. As you will see, I will use my index finger to make sure it all gets out nice and evenly on the base. Now that we've got our glue on and we are ready to flip it over and get it attached, we want to make sure that it is even on each side. So I'm going to pull out my tape measure here and I am going to check. We should be right at a half inch on the front and right at a half inch offset from the back as well. And we are right on the money here. And here we are dealing with more of those pocket holes as we just get these all nice and screwed in. We want them all nice and tight. I like to start with the middle and work my way around and then go to the sides last. A lot of times with the sides they want to kind of uh, bend inward a little bit and you're going to see me here in just a second as I kind of just straighten it out ever so slightly. Not much, just a little bit and uh, measure it too to make sure that we're about that half inch so it's nice and square and we drill those in and we go over to the other side and we do the exact same thing over there. And here we are spraying paint on the piece. This is uh, the color Retreat by Sherman Williams. Uh, my wife Jennifer picks out all of the design for these pieces and she just does an absolute fantastic job on designing every piece that comes through our shop. One thing you don't want to forget about is you want to put some kind of sealant on your base. Um, the wood itself is not enough and that's what we were doing there. And here is the finished product. What a major change. This is definitely going to make someone's home be very, very happy over the years to come as they're going to be able to enjoy this piece for years and years down the road. Just look at that base. Look at the detail, how it offsets from the front just a little bit, how the tapered legs come right up perfectly to the base. And this piece is an absolute knockout. 
As always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more DIY tips and tricks on refinishing furniture.